Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Chris Kuhl, uh, one of the organizers of Rejects, and we're here to talk to Nick Young from VMware about the talk that he just gave. Uh, so Nick, uh, thanks for the talk. And um, so you gave a little bit of background about, about yourself. So, but you know, I would like to know um, how you actually came to the container space. I assume your, your career predates the container world. And you know, how did you come into this world? Yeah, so um, I've uh, you know I've been working in this area for like almost twenty five years, I think. Actually, now that I think about it, um, and uh, yeah, previously in before I joined VMware, I was working for another company, and at that company, I was part of their uh, hosted operations sort of senior engineers team. That uh, we were uh, basically plonking down data centers as fast as we could to keep up with the growth of the company. Um, but the company started uh, moving towards bringing things into the uh, into a cloud, public cloud, um, and you know, we had all these data centers, and all of us data center monkeys were kind of standing around, being like, "Well, what are we going to do next?" And so uh, one of the architects and I got together and started thinking about what we could take all the expertise we had around in running uh, big clusters of things. We were actually doing some clustering uh, even before Cube. And we're like, "Oh, this Kubernetes thing seems pretty neat. Maybe we should uh, look into that." So yeah, we stood up a um, Kubernetes team in um, about uh, late 2016, uh, and so I think we were we started with 1.1, I think it was. Uh, so yeah, uh, and then yeah, we sort of never looked back. Um, the uh, um, yeah, and then so I worked there for quite a long time, and then I got the chance to move to VMware to become the uh, become the tech lead for Contour, uh, which is obviously an ingress controller, as I said. Okay, cool. And uh, so, you know, if you say you got into like the Kubernetes world in 2016, I guess you saw the technologies that predated uh, CRDs. Uh, maybe you can talk about that evolution, uh, what you've seen. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, when I started with Cube, it was all called, it was all third party resources. We actually, the design that we had for um, the company I was at, we actually were planning on leaning heavily into um, third party resources even back then. Um, we had a, a big idea to have a big sort of multi-cluster cluster, cluster. <laughs> um, and so we spent a lot of time looking into federation, and that was actually how I got involved in um, in the community. Was that uh, yeah, I started dialing into some of the um, SIG federation calls, um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, ended up participating in a couple of like these big long eight-hour workshops about federation. Uh, that you know, I had to start at one. I worked from one a.m. till nine a.m. <laughs> so that I could go to these workshops and stuff. But uh, yeah, it was really worthwhile. Um, you know, not only not only for personally getting me into the community, but uh, also just really good to talk about federation and stuff like that. I mean, the initial version of federation didn't end up panning out, but I think where it's at now is uh, really great. Yeah, what the hell happened to federation? <laughs> so I mean, yeah. So there's a there's a few things happened with federation. A different, uh, they basically pivoted. Originally, it was going to be Federation was invisible uh, and you could talk to a federated API server and never know. But then uh, that was just too hard. Um, and so they've sort of pivoted to this uh, model where you have like a you know, federated version of different things that, that let you pick like which clusters there are and stuff. It actually uses a bunch of the concepts that you need for CIDs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. But uh, and so I think, yeah. The thing that I learned from all of that was uh, how welcoming the community is for starters, but that a lot of the time you, I mean, it's hard for me in Australia to be involved in open source a lot of time because time zones, but it's also hard to be, to come to a lot of the conferences. And uh, yeah, it wasn't until I sort of started getting involved there that I was like, oh, look, you, there's all these smart people, but like, I know a bunch of stuff that they don't because I've been doing different stuff. And so my feedback is actually more useful than I thought it would be. Oh, cool. Good to hear. I think we all like the welcoming yeah. community aspect of things. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so what I heard from your talk is it kind of mirrors, uh, you know, what I've seen with the whole REST API docu um, you know, conversation. You know, you first, somebody starts using, introduces the technology, and then you start to get best practices. Um, and then you start to get tooling around that, you know, Swagger for REST APIs and stuff. Uh, how, how do you see this evolving and, and, and like, you know, and, and um, you know this, uh, you know best practice evolution, and um, how, do, how do you see that going? And how do you, how, what, what do you think the state of it is right now? I think, I think it is very early days uh, that that everyone has been sort of feeling their way on designing CRDs. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to do with this talk was to sort of bring all of the cool stuff that's been done in the core to 
to the people who are writing CIDs. I mean, every, like, like I said in the talk, everyone's writing CIDs now. And, um, you know, it does feel like there's all of this great stuff that has been learned by the people, the API machinery folks in the core that is really applicable to CIDs that it's really hard. It's hard to find if you don't know where to look. And so that was, I, the point of this talk was really, I just wanted to start the conversation about best practices. And this is what I have learned doing the stuff that I have, but I'd really, you know, I really want to have the chance to have more people talk about this sort of thing. Yeah. And are there particular tooling, uh, like new tools you would like to see to, you know, promote best practices and, and, you know, <clears throat> what, what, what do you see uh, that you want to be developed and what, what are you, are you, are you and your team working on possibly? Well, so, um, yeah, I mean, as I said in the talk, uh, you know, I'm a maintainer on the Gateway API, and the Gateway API I think is a really important, um, uh, a really important thing because it's one of the first times that a sort of relatively core functionality uh, for Kubernetes has been worked on out of out of the core Kubernetes tree, and so we are doing we are implementing the Gateway API with CIDs, but it's not really a, it's not as uh, custom <laughs> a custom resource definition as other ones. You know, it's it it is gonna it uses the the Kubernetes.io API group. Um, and so we have to do Kubernetes API review, the same as a core API. Um, but it's just that the, the actual deliverable is CRDs rather than something that's part of the API server. So um, it's been a really interesting uh, learning experience there. But in terms of tooling, what I the sort of thing that I'd really like to see people do eventually is to is to build in, you know, I mean, the, the place to start is for us all to talk about what we think are the real like best practices before you build tooling, you've got to all have a shared understanding of what you're trying to do and, and how you do those things. And then you can start building tooling that will check for the best practices. But before you can build tooling, you've got to be able to define what the best practices are. And I think that is still extremely early days. Okay, cool. So, uh, you project in the next, there's going to be a lot of work around that, I guess, I would assume, or hope. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think we're definitely, we have definitely had to do a lot of that work in the gateway API because, um, because of the, because of the fact that it's upstream, um, and we, I've had to do a lot of that sort of as a tech lead on Contour, you in and the rest of the team as well. But we've all had to talk a lot about when we're building our own CRD, how do we make this thing usable? How do we make sure that you know we're adding things in the right way and keeping the API guarantees that the Kubernetes API sort of implies? Mm -hmm. And so I think. Yeah, it's really important for everybody to understand this is a learning journey for everybody. Even the people who have been doing this for a long time, you, you know, I've been doing this for a long time now and you, know, but I'm still very, it's still very early days in for me. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, as I said in the talk, I've, I've learned a bunch of stuff, but that's all by making mistakes, right? Yeah, and that you, or, or what I really wanted to do was make it so that other people don't have to make those mistakes and we can all find fresh mistakes to make instead. Yeah, cool. So, so you, um, you know, this this talk is framed around CRDs, but you know, the core technology that you've been working on is Contour. Uh, maybe you can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, give give some, you know, indulge us, uh, indulge you know us with a little bit more information around uh, Contour. Um, you know, um, how the community is doing, uh, how it, uh, the state of it technically is it is it like is it beta? Is it is it ready for showtime? And I must say that you know mm -hmm. at Kinfolk. Um, you know, we actually had, we used Contour and we were very happy users of it. Uh, you know, we had oh, customers who were nice having 500,000 requests per second and Contour handled that really well. Um, so oh, yeah, awesome. I would like to understand, uh, how, you know, you know, give a, give a bit of overview of the project and where it is. Yeah, sure. Sure. So, um, as I said, uh, Contour is an ingress controller for Kubernetes. Um, we aim to be, you know, a feature complete, but at the same time, opinionated uh, ingress controller. We want it to be e contour to be easy to pick up, but and easy to get things working, so you can get your stuff, you can get your traffic flowing into your cluster. But there's a there's a pretty we want there to be a pretty significant uh, scope for expansion, so that as your use cases get uh, more full on and there's extra stuff you need, then contour can grow with you. And part of that is having our own CRD HTTP proxy um, that we've designed. It's it was designed originally for the case of having a multi-tenant cluster where you've got, you know, mul lots of different service teams sharing the cluster, but maybe you have like only a couple of domain names and you want to be able to have those service teams all share the same domain name and not accidentally break each other, which is really easy with the original uh, ingress um, construct. And so HP Proxy is sort of designed to do that sort of thing. In terms of, and so that's one of the reasons why we've had so much focus on the CRD bits is that it's really important because we expect that people are going to be coordinating using this API, that it needs to be an API. 
um, in, in work in the same way as any other API. The fact that it's delivered via the Kubernetes API server is you know, kind of not as important as the fact that it's an API. In terms of the status of the project, uh, Contour is an incubating um, CNCF project. We are slowly working our way through all of the criteria for graduation. Um, we'd really like to be able to apply for that sometime in the next sort of six to 12 months. Sooner would be better, but you know, we've got to make sure we uh, dot all those I's and cross all those T's. That's definitely a personal goal of mine is to get Contour to graduate. Um, we recently had a, uh, an external, a non-VMware, our, our second non-VMware maintainer uh, come aboard, um, so, which is great. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're actually, actually one of the last remaining things for us to do is to, is to look for people who are willing to put their, put their names in the adopters file. So uh, <clears throat> really nice to get a Kinvolk reference, a Kinvolk reference in there. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Let's talk after this. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's, uh, you know, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for no the presentation. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, I hope po folks reach out to you if they have questions around this. Um, but yeah, so yeah, thanks. Do. And uh, any final uh, words? Um, yeah, so uh, like you said, I, I would love to talk to people more. Obviously, you know, I wrote a talk all about it, but, you know, I probably had two or three hours more of material I could have could have squashed in there. So I've got plenty more to say and plenty more thoughts about this. So I'd be very interested to talk to anybody who... Um, wants to talk about this, uh, I'm at Young Nick on Twitter and on GitHub and on Kubernetes Slack. So uh, ping me in any of those locations, I'll be happy to talk more. So consistent. <laughs> Good. All right, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks very much. Bye, folks. Thanks to Microsoft Azure and Equinix Metal for supporting us at the champion level. We also want to thank Red Hat and Slim.ai for funding us at our supporter level.